In this section of the lesson, we're going to look at how we use diagrams to show subsidies. We use a demand and supply diagram to show subsidies. So we have price and quantity on the axes. We have our original demand curve. Our original supply curve is labelled supply pre-subsidy, which gives us a market equilibrium of P1, Q1. When the subsidy is applied to the market, this shifts the supply curve to the right because it lowers the costs of production. The distance between the two supply curves, the vertical distance, is actually the subsidy per unit. And that's really important to note, it's just the subsidy per unit. Because the costs of production have been lowered, we end up at a new market equilibrium, a lower, mark, lower price of P2 and a greater output at Q2. It's really important not only to be able to draw diagrams accurately, but actually to be able to explain subsidies using the price mechanism. On this slide is a piece of analysis explaining exactly what is happening when a subsidy is applied to a particular market. What I would like you to do is to read the paragraph and highlight or underline all the connective words or phrases in that paragraph. Secondly, I would like you to describe the features of good analysis. Firstly, those shown in the paragraph itself. And secondly, how good analysis is demonstrated in that diagram. So I would like you to pause the video and then to rejoin me when you've underlined all the connective words and phrases and when you've described the features of good analysis in the paragraph and good analysis in the diagram. So here we have the connective phrases highlighted in yellow. So what these do is force you to analyze. They force you to create a chain of reasoning. And they are particularly useful in ensuring that you give depth to your answer. So using things like this allows, this means that, this signals, so, therefore, this is because. It forces you to explain in greater depth. So therefore you are analyzing What makes up good analysis in that paragraph? Well, using technical terminology is really important. So if you're in year 12, of course, you won't be using theme three terminology yet. But if you're using this video as a revision, then you should be thinking about how you can embed theme three terminology within these answers, even though you may think, well, that's examining a theme one concept, you can still use theme three terminology. Do use hedging words, things like should, might, could, because nothing in economics is ever certain. The connective words we've spoken about, using things like consequently, this leads to, therefore, as a result, Obviously, you're going to need longer chains of analysis in 15 and 20 mark and 25 mark questions than in an eight or 10 mark. So use your judgment when you're answering your particular question. And just to keep you on point, try to use as many words from the question as you can in the first and last sentence of your analytical point. The diagram should be fully labeled so do check your axes, your curves and your equilibrium. So make sure you label everything. We say diagrams should be ACE diagrams, A-C-E, axes, curves, equilibria. They should be accompanied by written analysis, something like that we've just seen where you're referring to your diagram. This moves P1 to P2 and this increases output from Q2 to Q3, etc. And do try to use dynamic rather than static diagrams. So aim to do something with your diagram. Indicate an area, shift a line, show a change. Make sure your diagrams really work for you. 
Now we're going to see how we use a subsidy to tackle positive externalities. So positive externalities result in either underconsumption or underproduction. So here we have a market failure diagram with costs and benefits on the y axis and quantity on the x axis. The private market, so where we're looking at my marginal private cost and marginal private benefit, results in PQ in the private market. But we can see from the blue writing there is underconsumption because once we add in the external benefit to give us the marginal social benefit, that results in output Q star, which is the socially optimum amount of output. So there is underconsumption between Q and Q star. Now, in order to encourage consumption at Q star, we are going to need to lower the price from its original price P to P sub to encourage individuals to consume Q star. So we have the marginal social cost plus subsidy, the green line on there, and that gives us our socially optimum output and our socially optimum price is now P sub.